Hey everybody, it's Michael from Wahoo Comics here with another haul and speculation video. And as usual, I've got a bunch of books I'm looking forward to showing you. Starting off with this one, Nebula Number One. Now, before I actually talk much about the books, I first want to say that I'm just thankful even to have any books that we can look at today. As some of you know, I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia, and if you Google Charlottesville and USPS, you'll find that the mail service here has been a complete disaster this year. In fact, it's been so bad that one of our senators has taken a couple of trips just to try to reassure the community that soon our mail service will be restored like usual. There are people here who haven't had mail delivered to them for three weeks at a time. Uh, I've had mail that I've sent off that hasn't gotten to the recipient for four months. And so it's been a complete mess, and so I've been used to getting shipments in late, and that's annoying, but I've learned to deal with it. But this past Friday, I decided to look up the tracking number on the first shipment of books that I'm going to show you, and the tracking number said that those books had been delivered that day, and they certainly had not. And so I started to freak out, wondering, well, what, where the heck are my books? Uh, and so I looked, well, what do you do if the tracking number says that they're there and they're not? Well, the USPS website says wait 24 hours and then you can file a case online. And so I waited 24 hours, and, but that meant it was a Saturday night, which meant I knew, well, the post office isn't running their mail tomorrow. And then that was the long weekend where Columbus Day was on Monday, so the post office was going to be closed that day as well. So I waited until Monday night to finally file a complaint, and so I filled out all the form online. I hit you know, file, and then I get this message that cannot file at this time. And man, obviously that was super frustrating. I was wondering, well, is it because you can't even file something on Columbus Day, or is the website just down, or what is it? So I didn't do anything the rest of that night. And the next day, uh, the mail lady came and she had a couple of comic books I was shipping out uh, that she used to pick up and kind of explain the situation to her. And she said, well, try the website one more time. And in the meantime, I'll keep a lookout for your books. Uh, and I'll also tell the people back at the office what's happened if you give me the tracking number. And so I did all that. So she takes off. And then about 10 seconds later, she pulls back into the driveway and lo and behold, the comics had actually been delivered to the neighbors next door. And apparently they hadn't checked their mail since that Friday. I guess they're just used to getting mail like once a week. Uh, so it's just sitting in the box and she brought it to me. And so obviously I was happy to, to finally have it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, for a minute there, I was a little concerned anyway. Uh, so I got Nebula number one, uh, which is her first solo series. Uh, something I've talked about, of course, is that the first solo series of characters are great things to pick up uh, once a first appearance has been uh, out of your price range. And so I'm happy to, to get this one. And some other books I picked up in the same shipment from the same seller is Wolverine number two. And this contains the first appearance of the Muramasa blade which was featured in the Ten of Swords storyline. And so, you know, it doesn't have a, a, a lot of appeal to people like uh, because of that. But for me, if you might remember, a few months ago, I picked up the first appearance of the Twilight Sword from that storyline in Journey into Mystery 104. And so I've made it just kind of a little goal of mine to try to pick up all the first appearances of those swords because I thought it was a, a fun storyline. And when you can get a book like this, like Wolverine number two, this book's never gonna go down in value. I mean, it's never gonna skyrocket, I don't think, unless maybe that sword somehow shows up in a Wolverine uh, show on Disney Plus or something. But I'm not counting on that. Uh, but, but it's a book that will just steadily climb over, value, over time. Uh, books like Wolverine, anything pre-modern from these main uh, ty Marvel titles, uh, you just gradually go up. All right, then I also picked up Avengers 350. Uh, this contains the debut of the relationship between the Black Knight and Cersei. And as you might know, both of those characters are gonna be in the upcoming Eternals film. 
And if you've seen the trailer, there's just this image of them standing side by side. And I think and others think that they are going to start a relationship in that movie. And if they do, this book is one that will most likely climb in value. I also got Iron Man number 53. I think this is from volume three. I'm not sure about that, but I think it is. Uh, this contains the first appearance, and I'm sure I'm not going to say it right, Temugen, uh, who is the son of the Mandarin and who eventually takes on the role of the Mandarin. And so if you've seen Shang-Chi, you know, the Mandarin, of course, was the main antagonist of that movie. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised at some point in the future if they would introduce his son and his son takes on that role. And so I'm glad to have it. It also contains the first appearance of Friday, which is this artificial intelligence that serves as Tony Stark's assistant. In the movies, it's kind of like what Jarvis is in the movies. Friday is in the comic books. Uh, and then I also picked up a couple of run fillers of books, again, that aren't going to explode in value at any point, but just will steadily climb. And then I'm glad to have Uncanny X-Men 200, which has this cool cover of Magneto and features the trial of Magneto. And then Amazing Spider-Man 323, uh, which is part of the assassination plot. It's a six-part uh, storyline. And this was the only part I had not gotten yet. So I'm glad to finish up that run. Uh, and it's a beautiful Todd McFarlane cover, which I've talked about again and again, or things to consider investing in. Uh, his books are just gradually rising. And of course, it's a cool Captain America, Spider-Man combo cover. All right, then from the same seller, I picked up a few books that I already had copies of. These are my second copies of these books. First of all, sticking with the Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 315, uh, which contains the first cover appearance of Venom. Now, 316, he has a much more prominent role in the cover, and so that's definitely the money book uh, between the two. But again, once people start getting priced out of books like that, they start looking at the next best thing, and people are starting to see, well, Venom is on the cover. This is his first cover appearance. And, uh, and so I'm glad to have my second copy of that, as well as my second copy of this one, Thor 148, which contains the first appearance of one of my favorite villains of all time, The Wrecker. Uh, and if you saw a few months ago, I picked up a copy of this, uh, and I mentioned how there, there's rumors that he's going to be in the She-Hulk TV series, uh, which would make this book rise quite a bit in value if that happens. But it's a funny story with this book. So I actually almost bought this copy a few months ago. Uh, the seller had it listed online at a, at a certain price, and then I reached out to him and was like, hey, I'd like to buy it. And then he mentioned, oh man, you know, I, I haven't updated all my listings. I, I actually can't sell it at that price, it's too low. And so he offered to sell it to me at a certain number. And uh, at that same time was when I saw the other copy that I did end up buying and is about the same price and a slightly higher grade. And so I went with the other copy, but I kept this one in the back of my mind. Uh, and so here a few months later, when I was looking to buy some more books from that seller, I looked up to see if he still had this and he did, but it was listed at higher than what he had offered it to me for. And, so I reached out to him and I said, hey, you know, like, I don't know if you remember, but a few months ago, uh, I had looked at it at a certain price. You couldn't let it go for that, but he offered it to me at this price. And I asked if he'd consider giving it to me at that second price that he had offered it to me. And he replied back, he says, hey, if, if you remember uh, buying a book from me uh, or reaching out to me about a book months ago, uh, you deserve a deal on it. And so he gave it to me at the original price he was going to sell it to me for and so I'm really excited about that and one more book I picked up from him was uh, my second copy of Thor annual number 10 which contains the first appearance of the Demogorge all right uh, I have books from one other seller and I'll uh, run through some of these uh, I got Invincible Iron Man number 166 which contains the first appearance of Obadiah Stain who goes on to become the Ironmonger, who's already been in the MCU, so this book probably isn't gonna spike at any point. 
But again, just another book that's cool to have, a first appearance of a villain, which I love to collect, uh, and that will just climb over time. And speaking of Iron Man, Invincible Iron Man number eight, variant edition. It's got this awesome Madame Mask cover, uh, and I'm a big fan of Madame Mask. I've been thinking for a while, at some point, they certainly have to debut her in the MCU. And actually, I just found out a couple of days ago that there's rumors that she could be the villain in the Hawkeye Disney Plus series. So that'd be super cool. I really like her character, and I'm hoping she does debut, but whether or not that happens, I'm glad to have this uh, cool cover. I also picked up, uh, most of these, the rest of these books, I think all of them, uh, yeah, I picked up for like a dollar or two. Uh, so, yeah, some filler books and some spec books, but these are ones that you can probably find pretty cheap in a back issue bin. First of all, Fantastic Four 262, a uh, cool Reed Richards cover, the beginning of the trial of Reed Richards, uh, just uh, another run filler, uh, but that I'm happy to have. Also, FF number eight. Uh, which contains, I think, several first appearances, but the one I'm sure of is the first appearance of Kid Amortis, uh, and who, of course, the Amortis character is tied into the King character. King's a really hot you know, character to be uh, investing in right now as his role in the MCU is certain to grow. Uh, Thor 345, which contains the first cover appearance of Malekith, who's one of my favorite Thor villains. Uh, he was, of course, the villain in Thor 2, uh, but also the villain of the War of the Realms storyline in the comic books, and I really enjoyed that storyline quite a bit. I, I, I thought it was awesome. And uh, so I've, I got his first appearance in 344 a few months ago, and now I was really happy to pick up his first cover appearance again for a dollar or two. I can't remember exactly what I got it, but all these are around that. All right, a book that I think is really underrated, uh, Alpha Flight number two. And Alpha Flight's a really underrated series in general, I think. It has a lot of first appearances, just new characters that debuted. And this is the first appearance of the Master of the World, who I would consider Alpha Flight's kind of arch nemesis. And I think at some point, Alpha Flight will certainly be introduced in the MCU. And then, of course, they're going to look for antagonists for him. And I think uh, there could be Master of the World at some point. And so, again, these are the kind of things I love to buy. It's like a dollar. Uh, it's a first appearance of something. So it's, it's just cool to own whether or not it goes up in value. But it has the, the chance uh, to really jump quite a bit uh, if that character ever, ever debuts. Alpha Flight 14 uh, contains a number of first appearances. Uh, the first appearance of Elizabeth Two Youngman as uh, an adult who later becomes Talisman, uh, the daughter of, of Shaman. Uh, the first appearance let me see, of Ranak, who's part of the pantheon of the Great Beasts. Uh, and then the first appearances of Raman and Marina's mate. And these are all figures that are tied into Atlantis. And as I've mentioned in videos before, I think Namor is coming to the MCU sooner rather than later and so who knows what Atlantis characters are going to come with him and so again a cool book to own uh, for cheap and that could really jump in value all right new mutants number five uh, what's the significance of this uh, nothing really uh, it's a funny story i actually ordered new mutants annual five which contains the first appearance of some deviants that could show up in the eternals movie uh, but there's some miscommunication, and this is what I got. Uh, but I don't have it, so it's neat, and I, I think the cover looks really cool. Uh, and I reached out to the seller and said, hey, it's not a big deal, because I know this book was only a dollar, but yeah, I, I did ask for the annual. Next time I order from you, could you just include that in the shipment? And he said, sure, no problem. And actually, a few days after that, he just reached out to me and said, he's just gonna go ahead and ship that annual to me. So what a great seller. Uh, and obviously, when people do things like that, they're going to get more of my business. And so I look forward to getting my actual New Mutants Annual 5, but also doing more business with that seller. Uh, a couple of other last books, Firestar number one. Uh, 
maybe Firestar shows up one day. Uh, and again, this is her first uh, solo series. And then finally, my sleeper of the week, which is Storm number one, uh, the first solo series for Storm. And certainly, at some point, this character will be in the MCU. She's obviously one of the core X-Men. So sooner rather than later, she's going to be in. And always, it's always fun, a book like this. So I ordered this like two weeks ago. And then I think it was like last week, a prominent YouTuber recommended this book. And so this actually has already jumped up uh, quite a bit in, in value if you go to eBay and see what it's selling for. And so that always feels good. You know, you're like, oh, I think this would be a good book to buy. And then somebody else who's obviously a bigger name than I am yeah, recommends it and then people go running to it and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I, I got it just in time, a week early. Uh, and so anyway, it's cool to have that one. And since it's just recently popped, uh, again, this could be an issue that you might be able to find in a back issue bin for a dollar or two. And if you can, I think it's a great one to be picking up. So look for that. And uh, that brings me to the question of the week. So uh, I mentioned in Avengers 350s, the beginning of the relationship between the Black Knight and Cersei. Uh, but I'm curious, what is your favorite romantic relationship in comic books? Obviously, there's a lot to choose from. For me, I'm, gonna, I'm a big Spider-Man fan, so I'm going to go with Peter Parker and Mary Jane. And it's really interesting. I wonder if I grew up in the 60s and 70s when Peter started, you know, was in a relationship with Gwen Stacy before Mary Jane if I'd have been more of a fan of their relationship. But I grew up on Peter and Mary, Mary MJ, and, and so they're my favorite. Uh, I think they always will be. Um, and uh, But I'm curious to hear who your favorite relationship has been. And it can be a relationship like theirs where it's not necessarily a permanent one. Uh, but uh, yeah, what, comment below, tell me what you like. That brings me to the end of the video. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, it would be a big help if you do so. Uh, and like the video, comment on the question of the week or any other uh, comic related things you would like to mention. All right, thanks and uh, appreciate you watching and I look forward to doing the next one.